And welcome back. Mark your calendars for this Tuesday as Special Rapporteur and former Governor General David Johnston's much anticipated decision on a public inquiry into foreign election interference is expected to be released. Opposition MPs have been calling for public inquiry into alleged Chinese meddling for weeks now, but the Trudeau government has been waiting for Johnson to officially make the recommendation. So what will be the political fallout if Johnson gives a green or red light to an inquiry? Let's take it to our panel of strategists. Greg McCachran has advised politicians at all three levels of government and worked on the communications team for two national election campaigns. Greg leans liberal. Fred Delore is the former director of political operations for Prime Minister Stephen Harper and was the 2021 Conservative National Campaign Manager. He is now a managing partner with Deloria Public Affairs and Anne McGrath is national director of the NDP. And she does lean NDP. <laughs> Greg, <laughs> just, just says, yeah, we just need to, uh, to specify that. Greg, I want to I start with you because is there a scenario, a possible scenario, a world in which after all the criticism that uh, Mr. Johnson has been facing about being too close to Trudeau, not objective, clearly that's the message, that he would say, nah, we don't need a public inquiry. I would highly doubt it. Um, you know, we're looking to build trust around our election process. I think we, the you know Canadians, it's important to all of us. Um, so I think you know the best way to do that is to have as much in public as possible, uh, keeping in mind that there is going to be top secret issues here. Um, he'll report next week, but keep in mind that his mandate also goes to Halloween to October 31st. I hope that's not a, an omen, but he can report, I think, on a rolling process, um, come back to the government. In terms of his mandate, there's a bunch of things that he was asked to look into, the impact and extent of foreign interference, especially 2019 and 21, um, how our agencies are working, and that's the one that I'm really looking for toward because we have you know more leaks from CSIS and I think you know you could see in some of the comments from uh, cabinet ministers during the week of the Liberal convention there's an irritation with CSIS leaking directly to reporters now look I'm a former provincial communications director I have had leaks from whistleblowers I have ruined a health minister's weekend a long weekend in July one time getting a stack of, of, of letters that showed that the government was saying one thing in the legislature and something else to health authorities what I have an issue with is nothing that I ever touched like that might have actually jeopardized someone's life or an investigation or created worse things for foreign interference. And I find right now we're all scared to criticize the leaks because me as a liberal, I don't want bad things to be yeah. said about my party. But really, this is at a different level and no one, I mean, if you're the recipient of the leaks, you're definitely not going to criticize this. But I am quite concerned about the leaks from CSIS and I hope the former Governor General speaks about that. And we just see tidbits of those leaks, and but I'm wondering, if not a public inquiry, what then? I mean, is, is there an alternative to a public inquiry? Is there something that would satisfy the opposition? I think if there was any, uh, first of all, I will be shocked if he doesn't recommend a public inquiry. I just think that there is such overwhelming uh, evidence that it is necessary, and and it would be a, it would be a surprise to me. That said, you know, surprises happen for sure. Uh, but if he doesn't recommend a public inquiry, then I would hope that I mean the buck stops with the prime minister. I would hope that the prime minister would say, well, thank you for your recommendation. We're going to have a public inquiry, um, and 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 you know, I totally accept that it would be possible to design design a public inquiry in a way that is a bit different from some of the other ones that we've had. But I think that it would be, uh, it would be shocking. Some of that and it information be, is classified. It would be so, would be so would out be... of touch. It would be so out of touch to not recommend one. So Fred, your crystal ball, what do you think he will recommend? That's very hard to say. Uh, I've been very clear on my view on this. I don't think a public inquiry makes any sense. All we're doing is delaying the inevitable in terms of we need to get down to what actually happened here and figure out what are the solutions to it. And I'm hoping Mr. Johnson has a roadmap for that. We've spent the last number of months talking about you know the public inquiry. We're, we have House of Commons committees investigating this for the last number of months. I've testified myself. I've gone to committee. A lot of my friends have. Uh, liberals have gone. Uh, 
a campaign manager. As a campaign yeah. manager for the last campaign. Uh, we've had uh, officials come in from, from various security uh, agencies do this. I don't know what we're going to get more out of a public inquiry. I feel like we've done this. Uh, members of Parliament should be doing their work here and figuring out what are the legislative loop loopholes we need to fix to make sure that we're in good shape for the next election. Going back and, uh, you know, in public inquiry, I feel like I'm gonna, I'll be asked to go and do the exact same thing I've already done. It makes no sense to me. So, it, it, but there's been a lot of criticism about the special rapporteur coming from uh, Mr. Poiliev, who said he had a fake job and he's the ski buddy, and you know he used to be, if I'm, my memory serves me right, a great Canadian, uh, not so long ago, um, and you know chosen by Stephen Harper to be the Governor General. So, has this turned into a bit of a political circus? Yeah, I, I can't reconcile what Fred is saying, and and I see you know some validity in what you're saying, but. Your own party um, has spoiled this so badly. The language that Mr. Poliver has used about David Johnson is beyond the pale. It's not necessary. You disagree with him, you disagree with him being chosen for this, fine. Why do you need to insult him? And again, you don't even have the courage to insult him to his face. You do it through statements, you do it through Twitter. And the day that it was revealed that he wasn't going to meet with the uh, special rapporteur. There was one statement out of his office saying it was scheduling, come on. Yeah. And then later on, he doubled down and picked a fight with him, but not to his face, which I think is very un-Canadian. So, I, 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 this is a serious issue. We don't know much about it. We, we get drip and drip from it. We get little pieces of reports from CSIS. We don't get full reports. We have to, we have to underline that that the picture that we have is not a full picture. Should he have met with a special rapporteur who's, who's doing his investigation? Should Pierre Poiliev have met with him? Did Mr. Singh meet with him? So, yes, Mr. Singh did meet with him, uh, and I was there for that meeting, actually. Uh, so, so absolutely he did, and he met, he met with Bloc Québécois. So he has met with the other parties. Um, I feel like uh, this is a kind of a, a misstep on, on the part of uh, Mr. Poiliev. I think the fact that he started out by saying it was a scheduling issue, I, I, I thought that was ludicrous. Uh, I mean, and it sounded a lot like the excuse for not going to the Biden dinner, like I, he didn't read his emails. It's not very prime ministerial if that's the job that he's going for, to not be able to manage your own... Uh, you know, scheduling and, and, and those sorts of things. Uh, but then to change his tune and, and to really go hard against Mr. Johnson just seemed, it just seemed like a real misstep to me and very, very uh, uh, churlish and, 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 and uh, you know, I, I, don't think that, I don't think it looked very good at all. And I think that, uh, you know, I, I think that the one thing we should remember as well in all of this is that there are four by-elections going on right now. Um, and I, I would like to know, uh, you know, what, what's being done to make sure that nothing happens in these by-elections. I don't know if there's an issue in yeah. them or not, but there are by-elections going on right now. I don't think you can just close your eyes and pretend that this isn't happening, which it looked like Mr. Poiliev was trying to do. So, Fred, Fred Delory, I, it, it is, you know, so, so he's calling for a public inquiry and at the same time criticizing and not meeting with the special rapporteur. What's the strategy here? Who's he, who's he appealing to? I believe uh, Mr. Polyev is making it very clear he, he will not agree with whatever Mr. Johnson proposes unless it's a public inquiry. Mm -hmm. And even then, if, if it, the mandate isn't uh, to Mr. Polyev's liking, if it's not as, as goes as far as he wants, then, the, then he will disagree with that as well in terms of a public inquiry if it gets to that. So Mr. Polyev is the leader of the opposition. His, he really takes his job seriously. He's going to oppose the government and every single thing they do, and this is a part of how he's doing that. That's interesting. Um... Don't go away. Greg 